the International Space Station is currently orbiting about 250 miles above the Southern Ocean, just starting a northwestern, uh, northeastern uh, track towards uh, Indonesia. And it is today uh, now one, one visiting vehicle short following the unbirthing of a release of the SpaceX Dragon this morning at 5.56 a.m. Central Time. The two Expedition 35 crew members who took part in that activity got up early for the event. Commander Chris Hadfield of the Canadian Space Agency and NASA flight engineer Tom Marshburn both started their day yesterday, our time, at uh, 10 p.m. Central, while Russian flight engineer uh, Roman Romanenko slept in until the regular 1 a.m. space station wake-up time. Marshburn and Hadfield and Romanenko launched from the space station on December 19th in their Soyuz TMA-07M, which they then docked to the station's Rosvet module on December 21st. That puts them on their 90th day in space and their 95th day at the space station. The three have been alone at the station since March 15th when their previous three crew members, Kevin Ford, Evgeny Tarelkin, and Oleg Novitsky, left to return home after about 143 days in space. They're now looking forward to uh, being joined by three new crew members on Thursday when NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy and Russian cosmonauts Pavel Vinogradov and Alexander Misurkin are scheduled to not only launch at 3.43 p.m. Central Time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, but also dock that same day to the station's Poisk module at 9.32 p.m. It'll be the first single-day journey to the space station for a crewed, ve crewed vehicle, although the Russians have tested that plan out with several Progress cargo ships now. NASA TV coverage uh, will begin for the day at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on Thursday, and as you can see here, it will pick up several other times to follow along with the events. Docking coverage will start at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and... Uh, the Soyuz hatch opening coverage, once it has reached the station, will begin at 10.30 p.m. for an 11.10 p.m. planned hatch opening. The bulk of the day thus far has been devoted to seeing the Dragon off. Hadfield and Marshburn began working toward that event about 10 minutes after 11 p.m. yesterday when they wrapped up the work they started yesterday morning to get the vestibule, that's the slim area between the Dragon and the Harmony node, ready for the Dragon's unberthing and then depressurization. Once that work was done, the team here on the ground commanded the bolts that have been securing the Dragon to Harmony to release the Dragon. That took place at 3.05 a.m. Central Time and allowed Hadfield and Marshburn then to, then to maneuver the Dragon away from the station using the Canada Arm 2. When they'd moved it to a point about 50 feet away from the station, they then commanded the robotic arm to release it at 5.56 a.m. Central Time. And over the following 10 minutes, it performed three short engine burns that began moving it farther away from the space station. And since then, its distance has been steadily increasing. The Dragon is now scheduled to perform its final deorbit burn in less than 10 minutes at 10.42 a.m. Central Time. That burn will last for about 10 minutes and drop the capsule back into the Earth's atmosphere, and then it should splash down at 11.34 a.m. Central Time, 246 miles off the coast of Baja, California. I'm seeing here some of the video that was captured today from that release. If all goes as planned, uh, Dragon will be back on dry land tomorrow, and the 2,668 pounds of science samples from human research, biology, and techno uh, biotechnology studies Physical science investigations and educational activities will be making their way back to NASA for further study. The crew's part in the Dragon departure is over, however, and Chris Hadfield and Tom Marshburn each have some scientific work scheduled for the remainder of their day. Hadfield will be doing some work on the BCAT C1 experiment, that is the binary colloidal alloy test, which uh, studies the effect of phase separation on crystal growth. And Marshburn is working on a session of the energy experiment, which evaluates how much food is needed for astronauts during long-term space missions. In addition, they're both taking part again today in the reaction self-test, which is a portable five-minute reaction time task that allows crew members to monitor the daily effects of fatigue on their performance while in space. That's what's going on in space today, and this is Mission Control Houston.